So now that we know how to get input from the user, it's common that the user will enter in data to us that is not usually in the format that we want. After all, it is a human on the other side of the keyboard. So we have to account for the fact that they make certain assumptions, they make mistakes, and everything like that. So we may need to modify what they enter so it's in the proper format that we need to work with. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look and see how strings are represented inside of C Sharp. Now we've talked about this before, but just to review, um, a string is not just one big piece of text. In fact, a string is actually a series or a sequence of individual characters. So we talked about the happy birthday string that you see hanging up at uh, birthday parties. And really what it is, is you get all these individual characters which are attached by this one string that kind of connects everything. Even that space itself is its own character. And we'll just go through each one of these here. We can see that each one has its own little container. Another thing that C Sharp does is not only is it separating each one of these individual characters, but it actually numbers them. And it numbers them from left to right starting at the value 0. So we have this is, this is letter 0, letter 1, letter 2, letter 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So that means that we have a total length of 14 characters. We also want to look at the fact that, or realize that uh, when I refer to the, each of these numbers, what I'm referring to is something special called an index. So if I say, what letter is at index 4? It's the letter Y. If I say, what letter is at the third index? That's very different than saying at index 3, because index 3 is a P. When I say the third index, that means the first one, the second one, and the third one. So it would also be a P, but just by coincidence. All right, so index represents kind of like the address into um, the string, which one we're currently talking about. So now that we know how a string is represented, let's take a look at all the different things we can do. So I've created this simple program which has a few basic setups. First thing, we have a few strings. The first one is a word that we're going to manipulate. The second one we have is a phone number. And it's in a text format. You've probably seen this format before. So we have the area code, the residential code, and then the individual house number. And then finally, I have this word 2. And this word 2 is going to be the location that I store the result of all my, all my manipulations in if it's actually required. Sometimes we don't need to actually store the value and sometimes we just need to we're just looking and verifying certain information about the string. And that's what we're going to do at the very beginning. So for each one of these uh, piece of information or each one of these little operations that we're going to do, we're going to treat word, in this case, which is my string variable, just like it's an object. So when I type it in, word, and then I hit dot, you'll see that I get a whole bunch of actions that show up. So if, to start off with, I'm going to try and um, display all my answers directly on the console so we can see it as we're going. So I'm going to write um, console.writeLine. And what I'm going to write here is uh, word length. And I'm going to add to that word.length. Length is the command that we're looking at. So as soon as I run this, I hit F5. What we get is the original word shown, the original phone number shown, and then the length of the word. Well, the word is just the word hello, so we have five characters in total. You wonder where that first information came out. Just at the very beginning here, I have a quick console.write line which displays the original word and the original phone number. All right, so the next one we're going to do is this command checks to see whether a given string contains another string. So if somewhere the secondary string is found within the first string. So I could say console.writeLine. And the way this works is um, I'm going to say my word, or sorry, some little preamble text contains low because that's the text we're going to be searching for as shown in this little comment above. And I'm going to add to that the actual compare or the actual check. So we're going to say word.contains. And as soon as I open my bracket, it tells me what I need. We don't want the chart, we want the string. So in this case, what string am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for the string LO, low. 
and then when I run this again you'll see that we get a true so hello does contain does contain the string hello of course it does it's right there at the end so let's go through a few more of those and then we'll test them as we go so what is the index of the first occurrence of the text y in the word so where is it found well it shouldn't be found anywhere because there is no letter y in the word hello but just to show you we're just going to repeat the same process as before console.write line and we're going to say um, index of y and that is found at we hope we know it's not uh, word dot index of and what it's looking for is that string so I'm going to say y is y found in word well we know it's not so we should get something that doesn't represent um, a single index as actually belongs so we know that our strings are numbered from 0 up to the end of the text but if it can't find an index of the text that we're searching for in this case the letter y what it's going to do is it's actually going to give back the value negative 1 because that's an invalid index that tells us that it never actually found the value now it doesn't have to be just one letter here I could search for a whole bunch of letters if I wanted to but just for simplicity's sake I'm going to keep it at 1 so we run our program and we see that negative 1 was the result of this so it could not find the index of y so the next one is very similar to that previous one instead of finding the first index of a string it's going to find the last index of a string within the word. So we're just going to copy and paste this one line because um, I'm lazy. We're going to paste that in. In this case, we want to write the last index of, in this case, we're looking for the letter L. Word.lastIndex of L. Now this time, we should actually get a value that's appropriate and we see that it's found at 3 so the last index of L if we think about that H E L L the last index is at index 3 0 1 2 3 so it all works appropriate now we get into actual manipulation so this is where it's actually going to change the value so we look at this and we say okay well what can we do well the first thing we can do is we can actually replace letters within the word so this one is going to replace all the L's with P's so I'm going to store the result into word2. So word2 oops, is assigned the value of word dot replace bracket. So what I'm doing is I'm searching for the old value. So I'm searching for the letter L. And again, it doesn't have to be a single letter. It can be a whole series of letters. And I'm going to replace all the L's with the letter P. And then I'm going to output that console dot right line that's right replace L's and P's sorry with P's and word 2 and again we'll run our program and we should get hepo and we do hepo and we're going to do the same thing again, but this time, instead of replacing the L's with P's, what we're actually going to replace it with is an empty string. What we mean by that is instead of a P, we're actually going to replace it with quote, quote, which means absolutely nothing. Effectively, what this means, it means it's going to erase all the L's. So our final string will have no L's in it or anything else to replace it. So when we run, when we run this again, we just get heo because the L's are now gone. Another thing that we can do is we can actually cut out a certain chunk of a string and use that chunk. So in this case, I'm going to assign word to the value of word dot substring. Substring means look for a string within a string or cut out a string within a string. And the way this works is we've got to supply two pieces of information we got to supply a start index. Where do we, which index do we want to start cutting at? So I'm going to try and cut out the area code of the phone number. So if I look at the phone number, if I scroll up and I look at the phone number, the area code starts at index 1, 0, 1. 
and it goes for a length of three characters. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start at index one and I'm going to go for a length of three characters. You notice that I separate each piece of required data with a comma, just like we talked about before when we talked about try parse. And now when we run this, oh, sorry, I forgot to output it. Um, console dot write line. We're going to just write area code plus word two. You notice that I'm always using word two. Um, this is okay because we're not using word two any for anything other than um, quickly doing some manipulation and then outputting it. If we wanted to use it continually on with the rest of the program, we'd need a separate uh, variable for each manipulation that we're doing. But in this case, we're keeping it simple. And we see that we just get ELL. That is not correct because I cut out from the wrong word. Instead of cutting from phone number, I cut from word by accident. So this should be phone number. And we run this program and we should get 555. And we do, 555. Another one we're going to do is we can have the ability to actually convert all the letters in the word to uppercase. So this is going to work very similar to the previous example. Word 2 equals, or assign it to the value of word dot 2 upper. We don't need any per, we don't need any data in there in between, so we just run it, and then we can actually output it. Console dot right line uh, word let's say upper case plus word two. If we run this, if we run this, sorry we get hello in all uppercase. We can actually do the same thing, but to lower as well. So I'm actually literally going to copy and paste this below and just convert, just change a couple words. So we can say to lower, which means we need to change this to lowercase. So just with one quick word change, we actually get the opposite. So now we get all lowercase. We notice that the the original word had a capital H in the beginning, so we see that it's manipulated and changed. Um, not only that, we have a few other ones. We have a really handy one called trim. And what trim will do, it'll trim off any blank spaces on both ends of the word. So all the stuff to the left, all the stuff to the right. So if we have spaces. Now we don't have any spaces in this word, but just to show you how it actually works, same process. Word 2 is assign the value of word dot trim. In this case, we don't need to supply it with any information. We just need to output it. Console dot write line, and then we say trimmed. Oops. Word two, and if we run our program again, we get the original word hello because there was no empty spaces on either end. And those are all the basic string, mani string manipulation operations that we can do. There's going to be a few more once we learn um, another topic in the future, but for now, this is pretty much everything.